Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work cause my boss is a jerk and I'm not even that paid. I need a change in my life cause I don't feel alive and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh, hold my beer for a minute. I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket. I'm going on a trip and I don't plan to visit. I'm gonna stay there till I feel like I'm winning. Oh, and this is just the beginning. I need a big change, help me feel like living. I need a big swing, home runs I'm hitting and I'll never look back. Moving on till I get it all. So if at any point, right, somebody says, let's go to the key, let's go to the paint, let's go to the lane, you know where it's at. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Chad Thomas. I'm from Ashton Union Island. Hope and Hope, Blue Chip Basketball Academy has impacted my life a lot by making me a better person. Moving to Winston-Salem, North Carolina has impacted me by giving me help with my schoolwork and the, making me a better person basketball wise because I got people around who can help me. Court line is important. Baseline is, if you step over the baseline, that's out of bounds. I realized that basketball in the U.S. and basketball in St. Vincent is too different. Over in America, they take basketball more serious than they do here in St. Vincent and the Grandies. So a lot of kids here who play basketball won't get a lot of opportunities like how you would in America. Well, being able to go in in the gym, lift weights, go in, having someone to help you develop your skills and, you know, sitting down and having conversation like how you're doing and different stuff. The challenges I face here is that I did I never had nobody to help me develop my basketball game while I was in the US. I got someone who can take me to the court, show me what I've done wrong and what I've done right, and show me my corrections. You must have the grades in order to continue your basketball career to the next level. Grades is the most like the first thing the coaches are gonna ask for is your grades. So that's gonna be the first. So a lot of kids that never had the opportunities to like go oh, to the fundamentals, you get, they get to know the fundamentals of the game, help them get better every day. So, you know, it's been good to start a camp. How does the first annual Shad Towns basketball camp impact your community? Well, it shows the kids that they're still people out there helping and looking, looking at them, no matter what, they can't listen to what someone gotta tell them or anything. So they just gotta keep their head up. All the kids, the among the kids that came out, it's my sit down, they listen, they do what you told them. So, you know, like a lot of kids are out there still trying to be good at basketball. You're great, I feel great because at the end of the day, God gave everybody a talent. So if that's what they are forcing to get, they gotta just keep pushing and that makes me feel good. Well, I hope the kids keep coming out, keep getting better. And one day, once they have the grades, once they grades good and everything, they'll get an opportunity to show my hopes for my camp moving forward is Letting the kids get better at the game, basketball, fundamental wise, and let they keep pushing, like never stop, no matter what. And so they know that there are opportunities, there's still opportunities out there 
for anybody. I feel ready to play college, college basketball because I have been, I've got a lot better. I've been working on what I don't have and going to the next level. I know I got to go hard every single day. Going to college and playing college basketball will impact my camp by helping, like, getting better, seeing what the college coaches teach me and see if I can bring it back to help the kids here at the same, you know, to make them see the kind of work that you put into at the next level. I was home and I was playing a game on my PlayStation and then my daddy called me and asked me if I want to play basketball. I told him yes and I saw my daddy playing basketball and I started liking sports. So I discovered I have basketball skills from my brother. When I moved to Union Island, my brother and my cousins was like, oh, you tall, you can play basketball, you should start playing basketball. Because I moved to go to school there with my grandma, I used to stay with my grandma. And while staying there, I used to just go on the court, shoot the basketball, and they used to help me come on the court and be like, oh yeah, you gotta do this, you gotta show me. And then after they leave, I just continue doing what I was doing. I didn't stop, because I mean, if I had stopped, I and mean, then, you know, nothing would have happened, because you can't always depend on somebody. You, know, you gotta put your individual work in. He just put up some new hoops, like brand new hoops, and they look into the floor, floor of the court. It's, you know, it's awesome. Oh yeah, I played basketball. I played basketball for the St. Vincent, Twenty One Island school games in St. Vincent and in St. Lucia. So it's been hard for us here to watch because you know the differences is like the channels and stuff. You can't get to see the sports that's playing. I mean, I go on YouTube and I watch it, like you know, watch a different type of drills or whatsoever. So yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I look up to LeBron James. You know, he's just awesome. He's good. He's great. Tell me, tell me, tell me why? Why is he great? Because on and off the court, he's a leader on the court and he's a leader off the court. So you can look at him. He helped the kids, not only the kids, but he look at everybody respectfully on the court. He just plays the game the right way. And he just do what he's asked to do. Uh, I know I don't afford to, um, to my cousins. They was like, oh, there was this guy who played basketball in Union and he played in the NBA. And I was like, oh, like I would like to see him. And then one Easter, he came back home and then I saw this big, like I saw this dude, this tall dude. And I was like, who's this dude? And then my friends was like, oh, yeah, there's on a downfall. So I was like, I was surprised. The first time I walk in, like, the, so when I reached the U.S., the first night, I reached like in the morning, like around one o'clock. And then the next day I had a game and I walk in. When I walk in, I was like surprised to see an indoor court because it's my first time on an indoor court. I always wanted to play on an indoor court and it felt really good. I would say always stay in school, keep your head up. Always know there's someone looking at you. So everything you do, do it good, you know, and keep pushing, keep going hard. I would like to say thank you to those people. Thank you very much. I really appreciate what you have done for me. And hope and hope the members, everybody in Blue Chip, thanks for being there for me, supporting me from day one, for instance, I started school and since I finished and up to this day, you know, just thank you for everything. My name is Franz Pierre. I'm 16 years old and I'm from North Carolina, United States of America. Um, I've been playing basketball for about 10, 11 years since I was five years old. I started playing because my older sister was playing and I always wanted to be like my older sister. That's why I started playing. 
Um, right now, I'm currently going to go into my second year of high school at Salem Baptist Christian School in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Um, I've been trained by Coach Kashan. I first started going to his little basketball camps when I was about seven years old, and he started training me and taking me under his wing when I was about 13 years old. Um, I decided to come to St. Vincent because I, I've missed out on all the other mission trips he's taken since I've known him. I really wanted to come here and get the island experience and help younger kids to um, play basketball, learn the game the right way, and just, um, you know, have a, have a great experience here. Good morning, my name is Coach Tim, and um, we're here at um, the Camden Park, um, trying to walk along with the kids. As you know, basketball here in St. Vincent have um, been one that, um, you know, kind of go on the down low, but still, um, we just want to take this opportunity uh, where we can start from this level and introduce basketball fresh again to to um, our country. Um, yesterday we were in um, Girls High School, uh, as I mean, many people would have seen, um, the structure there is, is, is a push forward for basketball and I uh, hope that this will help um, the community itself to see um, which direction we are heading. Um, there's some nice hoops up there, but as you see, um, there is so much more need to, need to be done here in St. Vincent where, where it comes to basketball, but this is a blue chip. Club is all about um, development and um, helping the youth them to um, see their purpose and that they will grow. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's hope for hope. This is what this um, basketball club does and help those youth um, who need help and who need some guidance in their life. So, the matter of um, letting them see how important it is to be a part of a, a sport and what the sport have to offer them in terms of um, where their future lies. And that has been um, one of my concerns as well. Um, whereas you look at other countries internationally, when guys get into that spot, they they have more less things to think about. But to have somebody playing sports and still have to worry about their life in general, uh, you know their needs and stuff like that, it takes a toll on them. For me, personally, I think a lot can be done in terms of um, treating our internationals, our our players who would have worked very hard to reach where they are, and treat them a lot more better, more appreciative of their of their time that they would have put in and sacrifice they would have made. And I think if a lot has been done in this in this area here, it will help a lot of kids as well to see there is a future in sports. I think um, that's the key term. When you don't see a future in sports, some don't even bother want to play. Right. Some just play for fun. I mean, sports should be played for fun as well as yes, but if you're gonna work towards it to build a career, I think they need to see something that they can really gravitate to and I mean, motivate them even more to play the sport with more, you know, with more focus. So I think this is an area that we need to work on in St. Vincent as well. Treat our nationals and treat, you know, you know, these players a lot more better in terms of the accomplishments. So that, that's one of my concerns here in St. Vincent as well. So, I mean, in a whole, it takes everybody as well within the community to help these kids. It takes the older ones to set the example. It takes the older ones to, to push them. You know, it takes the older ones to be there for them and as well. And importantly, it is very important to teach them the right way, you know? I mean, basketball is not so much the only playing the game, but it also helps to discipline one's life. Each one teach one, but it start from the top, come down, you know? So within our communities, we need good role models. And I've, I've played basketball at an early age, and this is one of the areas I, I learned to discipline myself, how to, how to treat my colleagues, how to respect other players, how to accept when I lose, and how to go about handling myself, you know? So this is what the sports bring. It brings you to accept challenges and how to deal with challenges. But you know, as a whole in St. Vincent, let me encourage us to to you know to to see where we are, fix the problems, and, and that will help a lot of youths now to start have more interest in the game. Our infrastructures, our our um you know facilities, they need more more um more upgrading. You know, you look at some basketball courts, they are just there and uh, they are without structure, which I think um there's there's there, there should be um, a lot of emphasis put in these structures so that people within the community, you know, you check my area in Vaughan, for example, there's a basketball court there without structure. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Whereas you can go within the community and, and grab a few of the youths and the school is school closed and you can use this opportunity to teach them the game that they can, you know, come together and start doing something that can occupy their time more positively. So I will appeal to, you know, you know, whosoever is in charge you know, of sports in St. Vincent, uh, Ministry of Sports. Um, get all these, you know, structures, all these basketball courts upgrade. Make it, you know, playable. Yeah. You know, council the people give you your, your stamp. At some point, they're gonna say, well, 
Why do you want to go to Puerto Rico? Why do you want to go to Dominican Russell? What? No, I'll go for sleep. <laughs> you can't do that, right? Guess what they're going to do? Denied. You have to be able to explain what you're doing. So, why are you going to Aruba? I want everybody to stand around the circle. We're going to do a pass and drill. These guys probably know it. And they're going to require you to speak. Okay? And they're going to require you to know the person's name next to you. Who's going to pass to you? Or who you're going to pass to? All right? My name is Anneji Mitchell. He's going to pass it to? I live in St. Vincent by the basketball courts next okay. to the center. Well, I'm going to take my spot. Mm. I'm going to take his spot. Tim, you going to pass I love it? basketball because when I was young, I used to admire the sport. I used to come right. on the court I'm and shoot some too. hoops, especially when I was too young to do that. I grew up loving the sport, and it's just the only thing that gives me um, life. Take two steps back. One, two, two. Uh, all right. Here we go. Bounce pass. Front. This is the bank. Hop over. Woo. This is the river. If you are on the line, look, if you are on the line, or if you didn't move, or you move and you're not supposed to, you're out. Okay? Test run. Here we go. Both feet together. So this is bank. This is river. Look where I'm at. Look where I'm at. This is bank. This is river. So you notice I'm hopping, right? I'm not stepping across. I'm hopping with both feet. Okay? So we're going bank. Good mark, yeah? River. All right. So you guys do what I say, not what I do. You understand that? Tagging your stack, you in. You gotta run, right? We call it catcher, growing up. I said, all right, I'm not on play today. I wanna listen to what this preacher is talking about. And he was talking about, right, a world beyond the one that we see. That's like a world this place called Samaria. And he came to this well. Everybody know what a well is? Okay, so today our well is that cooler. And it's something that carries water, but Dong, dong, dong. To your. You need to go to my left, your right. There it is. Dong. Alright. Wait, wait, wait. Get the bolts for the bottom. Alright, push that through first. Yeah, 
Okay, so Alright, bolt. Where's the big bolt, Winsburg? Come now, come now. Where's the big bolt that you just happened in? Right. Oh, but we don't care. Okay, that hole. It holds. Which is right, it is. So I'm going to let you grip it like, okay. Over here. No, wait, bro. Hey, hey, hey. I need these. Right, that's what I'm going for. Which is them. Them. Yeah, I'll raise them. Yeah. Push up your neck. Let's do the front first. Okay. Yeah, 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 but it, hey, do we need a lock for the back? No, it don't have no lock. Yeah, stop it tight. No, this too tight. Walking easy, you know. Some people don't only see it when this side done, but boy, what this side doing? You got a knife, huh? Yeah, around there, yeah, around there. Yeah, that one. Oh, that's how you do it. No, it's not. Are we hammering it? You have to. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. You sure we ain't missing nothing else? No. Yeah, you sure? What, what you think, eh? Car wind boat? 17, 13, Daisy wheel and this. You go this way. We ain't gonna look out. Yeah, but you had to come in that way. No, no, no. This is the front. This is the front. This is the front. This, these attached. In. One move. Check it light. Check it light. Hold it. Boy, I hope I live in in space by the time I run running a country. <laughs> I swear. One, two, three, up. So uh, this, just bring this up. Yeah, just bring this up in me. Knife. Somebody cut this. Put the knife there. Batman. Knife. Knife. Batman. Do you knife there? Um, this will go between here, sir. So wait, wait, wait. So these are going on the outside. Wait, that down here. Yeah, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's never hard to double check. Right now, every, everything you see right now is a good thing. I'm going to do some. Yeah, pull the test again. Yeah, pull the test again. Don't move it. 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 Don't move
If you can't do it one way, yeah, so it's a football. Is it sticky? Yeah, no. It's sticking, it's sticking on. Stick to the glass. Yeah. Okay, good. Leave that, leave that. Don't pull it out. Just leave that.
Thank you, first and foremost, for all of your support that you have given a hope and hope. We are here finishing up our mission trip, our 2021 mission trip. Obviously, it was a very small group due to the COVID pandemic, which is still plaguing our world. But we we're still able to do some work here in St. Vincent at our care points. Um, in Camden Park, we were able to re, um, restore the court. We painted lines. We picked up trash. We cut the grass. Um, changing the hoops. We were able to do a lot of fun stuff. We also were able to launch our Blue Chip Soccer Academy, which is a program under our Hope and Hope Incorporated, which is a nonprofit here in St. Vincent. And we were able to have our sixth annual Veronica Bishop Classic, which was a celebration to our new hoops. Thank you for our supporters. Thank you for our church, Revo Church, who have donated to this cause. Um, it was a joy for us to be able to see five, six, seven-year-olds shooting on the regulation hoop that they should be shooting on. It was an awesome opportunity to share the gospel with many. And we hope in 2022 that we'll have a large group coming down, loving our intentions and sharing the gospel message while teaching us the sports, um, the rules, the games, the things that we can use to further ourselves. If you don't know, just a reminder, hope and hope means the hope of eternal life through Christ and the hope of an abundant life through education and sports. But we have been doing that for the past two weeks. Franz Pierre Jr. has traveled down with myself and we we're able to establish a lot. We we're able to accomplish a lot. Um, this year we were able to venture into the territory of Union Island, which is the last major Grenadine Island and we have formed a bond with the Union Island Basketball Federation. We also want to thank them for allowing us to be there. We had over 70 plus kids in our event, at our camp, and they have loved us, embraced us, and treated us correctly. Um, we will be back. We love to be back, but we want you to join us. Once more, I want to say thank you. As we finish up our 2021 mission trip, it will be a bittersweet moment, but it's time for us to regroup refocus, replan, and then get a chance to return in 2022. Thank you. We love you and hope you're doing great. Yeah.